शुक्लांबरदनम विष्णु शशिवर्णम चतुर्भुज प्रसन्नवदन ध्यानोपात सरस्वती नमस्तुभ्यं वरदे कामिणी विद्यारंभम करा मे सदा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यम अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओं सहनावत सहनौ घुन सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वी नवधी तमस्मा विदिशा वह ओं शांति 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 दयानंद रूपम मदाचार्य मेरे भज गोविंद भज गोविंद गोविंद भज मूढ़मते संप्राप्ते सन्निहिते काले नहीं नहीं रक्षति डुकुंकरणे मूढ़ जही धनागम तृष्ण पुरुषुद्धि मनसी भी तृष्ण निज कर्मोपातोदय चिंतन भरनाभिदेश मोहवेशिकार मनसी विचित वार मलिदलगत जलमति तरल तज्जीवितशयचल विधिव्याध्यस्त लोक शोक समस्तोपाजन सवन्निज पिवार पश्चाजीवति जर्जर देहे वार्ता कोपी न पृछति गे सो द फर्स्ट वर्स शंकराचार्य इज स्ट्रेट अवे टेलिंग यू व्हेन डेथ कम्स नथिंग एल्स इज गोइंग टू हेल्प यू नथिंग इज गोइंग टू प्रोटेक्ट यू नहीं नहीं रक्षति सो डुकुरिंज करने इज ओनली अ Uh, it's only to say that nothing else. Okay, it's not just grammar or karma. Anything, whatever you have accumulated, whatever it could be your body, your mind, your relatives, your friends, your wealth, anything that you have accumulated in this world, nothing is going to help you if you have not held on to Ishvara. So Ishvara alone is going to protect you when death comes. Then he says, when nothing is going to protect you, then he says, vittam, vittam, artha is not going, to, artha kama is not going to protect you. So he says that in the second verse, he says, um, what does he say? Mudra jahi hi dhana gamat rishnam purusat budhim manasi vitrishtam yella dase nije karma paatam vittam se ne vino daye chittam artha. Artha means wealth. Wealth could mean anything. It need not necessarily be money, because for for every individual, wealth is definition of wealth is different. For some children is wealth. For some relatives are wealth. For some friends are wealth. For some money is wealth. For some buying land is wealth. For some people having more houses, you know, is wealth. So it depends. Whatever you consider as wealth, that is what it's not. He is not just talking about money. He is saying anything that you consider as wealth, anything that you consider as security, even that is not going to sorry, protect you. Then comes karma. He says 
I'm going to uh, avoid sleep to some extent. So you start by saying to some extent, at least for two hours, at least in the morning, at least in the evening. Then next week or for four weeks, you do like that every Thursday. Let us say, every Wednesday, let us say, for half day. Then you know that you are able to do without it. And then slowly extend the time and slowly we get over it. But even though these addictions have some psychological reasons also why a person is addicted to something, but if it is just simply an impulse, you know, to go about having these pleasures, then you can easily tackle it. But if it has some psychological reasons, because most of the addictions are deeply psychological, then you may need some help, you know. You may take the help, you have to take the help of a counselor or someone wise. Like we have this addiction to alcohol, addiction to cigarettes. See, all these addictions, there are certain addictions which are socially acceptable and certain addictions which are socially not acceptable. So if somebody is addicted to coffee, people just talk about it proudly. Uh, they are addicted to shopping or coffee or tea or sweets. People just make fun of it, laugh at it. And they think it's all right to have such addiction. So it doesn't affect anybody around you. But when it comes to smoking and uh, like drinking and being addicted to women, then it's socially not acceptable. So, um, but anyway, both are addictions. So we cannot legitimize a particular addiction and uh, Say these are okay and the other ones are not okay. So if you have any such addictions, even if you are addicted to music, I have to listen to music in order to relieve myself. Without it, I can't do it. Some people are addicted to many things. Even that is an addiction. It's a longing. So Shankara is saying here, this addiction, this uh, sexual instinct is something which is natural. So don't challenge yourself, you know, like, uh, you don't have to, somebody, you know, they want to prove their brahmacharya by sleeping naked with women, you know, all that you don't have to do, that is, that is ridiculous, I mean, that things up. You don't have to challenge your instincts. When it comes, you just deal with it, that's all. So, nari, stana and nabi. So we read in our uh, Puranas, in our Itihasas also, you know, like um, whenever a Rishi does tapas, Krishna you know, does tapas, and Indra immediately says, Menaka, Tilottama, Ramba, come on, go. <laughs> they are assigned, they have an assignment to go and disturb somebody's tapas. And Indra also had that, even Indra himself had this. So we see this in Puranas. Why these Puranas and Itihasas, this, they don't try to hide it. Because, um, in fact, when um, Gautama Maharishi actually accepts Ahalya after uh, she was relieved from the curse, he didn't say, he didn't take divorce. After that, they live happily ever after. Now, why not talk about it? See, he also accepted that it is natural for someone to be like that. Even in the um, story of Parashurama's mother, Renuka, you know, there also. See, um, we see that even men, women, both are a victim of uh, such instincts when they were supposed to be. No, live in a disciplined manner. It is not a crime, it is not seen as a crime, but it is only a, a lesson. Like, even when Rishis can become a victim, become a prey for it, you have to be more careful. That's all. It is not to say the Rishis uh, were weak in heart. It's not like that. When Vishwamitra was seduced by Menaka, uh, Shakuntala was born. Okay. So he left uh, Shakuntala 
in the ashram of Kanna Maharishi. So Kanna Maharishi brought up this uh, young girl and then she was married to Dushyanta and then we had Bharata, the great king. And uh, so it is okay. What he's saying is don't try to analyze it too much and don't fall a prey for it. Don't become a victim of it. That is what uh, Shankara is saying in this shloka. And the next shloka. Fourth, fourth verse. Nalini dala gata jala mati taralam. You can repeat. Nalini dala gata jala mati taralam. Advadhi vitama ya tapalam. Vidhivyadya bhimana grastam. Lokam shokahatam chasamastam. Nalini means lotus. Lotus or lily. Nalini Dala means lotus leaf. Jala is water. Nalini dala jala means uh, water on the lotus leaf. This water on the lotus leaf is atitaralam. It's very unsteady. It doesn't stay in one place. Uh, it's always trembling in nature. See, all of you must have played with this. Lotus leaf and water, a drop of water. So when you are holding it in your hand, even if your hand is, even if your hand is steady, it's a very slight breeze, even if it is there. The drop of water keeps moving, and sometimes we also keep moving to see the beauty of how it moves on that leaf without. Like a pearl, it keeps moving. It's very beautiful, especially if the sunlight falls on it. Looks like a gem, precious stone. So as you are playing with it, suddenly the drop falls. You know, it's gone. It's very unsteady, trembling, tatva. Just like that, so too. Life is atishaya chapalam. Jivitam means life. The life is atishaya chapalam. Atishaya means extremely, excessively it is unsteady. Anything may happen anytime, any minute. So every day, that's why every day waking up is a wonder. When we wake up in the morning, every day is a new day, it's like a new birth. And sleep is seen almost like a death. Because anything, anything could have happened in sleep. So that I woke up in the morning is a wonder. It's a grace. It's a blessing. Every day crossing the road and reaching the other side of the road is a wonder. And, uh, anytime you sneeze, when when you sneeze, I survive after every sneeze is a wonder. Why? Why sneeze is such a important thing? If whenever somebody sneezes, we say bless you, Aishman Gavar, Dirga Aishu, Kote Aishu. Why we say good night? Because when we sneeze, the prana comes out in a very so soon. You know? Extremely so soon. And uh, for some people, the whole body shakes when they sneeze. And uh, people get lower back ache also. <laughs> the way the prana moves out of the body. And it's pushed out. The prana is totally pushed up when you sneeze. And what if this prana which goes out doesn't come back? 
Hmm? Usually, the prana, every, of course, every minute it is there, every minute in the sense, every second when I breathe in and breathe out. When I breathe out, I take my breath in. So even at that time, there is no guarantee that I will take in the next breath. But sneeze is much more, you know, because a lot of force is involved. The same with vomiting also. When somebody vomits, what happens? The prana is being pushed out. You know, throwing out means prana has, is pushing out something out. And at that time, the person feels extremely weak. You know, um, the whole body trembles. The person feels weak all over the body. Sometimes you feel as if you feel hollow inside. You feel weak and you suddenly sweat and your hands become chill, especially when there's food poisoning and all that. When vomiting is happening, the prana is being pushed out forcefully. So next time when you see somebody vomiting or sneezing, we need to be very patient with them. Because sneeze also comes suddenly, you know. You don't know when you sneeze. And vomiting also, you don't know how it happens, why it happens. The person feels extremely weak. All the limbs are, you don't feel the grip, you know. And, and some people, they go blank. You don't know what's happening. So it's not, it's not a good time to scold them or be upset with them, you know. It's almost like you're knocking at the door of Yama when somebody is sneezing or vomiting. Or, so, you can just be with that person. If the person is vomiting instead of asking too many questions, the person can't speak because the prana is in the opposite side, you know, in the opposite direction. It's going out direction. So the person can't even speak properly at that time. There is no breathing in. Breathing in is much lesser at that time. So one has to educate oneself and maybe you should educate everybody around you. So scolding and shouting is not going to help. At that time. In fact, it will be more painful. Because they are already embarrassed that they have vomited and they are already in pain, <laughs> they couldn't breathe properly. And in addition, if somebody is holding and pointing out and looking at them as if they have done some crime, that has to be avoided at that time. You can gently touch the person, make them feel that you are there. Really, this happens when somebody slips down, you suddenly slip and fall, thumb, you fall. When at that time the prana is pushed out in the shock, because when you're shocked, the prana is pushed out. So even when uh, such things happen, when somebody is in shock, the person doesn't know what's happening. So anything can happen during that time. So that's why we say, especially when somebody sees, generally we say it only for kids. <laughs> Once they grow up, no kids will say that part. They'll say, deep high should. Life is very chapala, not stable at all. Forget about death, okay? Death is final, unstable, anything can happen anytime. That is different, of course. But even while in your day to day life, suddenly you fall sick. We have seen some, suddenly they have cancer, suddenly they have some disease, suddenly this corona, you know, people die. They don't know what's happening. Suddenly a, a person becomes paralyzed, they can't move, they can't speak. And, uh, suddenly today you are healthy and tomorrow you are not healthy, you are bedridden or you are weak. So life is not stable anytime, it is not the same. The day. physically and emotionally anything can happen to a person so even when you are fit also even throughout the day suddenly morning you are happy evening you are not happy suddenly morning you are moody and evening you are moody so people are not stable in they have they say oh morning only I was talking to you yesterday I met him oh my god what happened why we ask right you shocked so that is how uh, life is very unstable. This does not make you feel scared, frightened. Of course, 
Actually, he wants to fight in this. <laughs> Shankaracharya wants to fight in this. Come on, anything will happen. Anytime this will happen to you, don't think it's happening to everybody around you. It may happen to you also. Be careful. Things are very really unpredictable. <laughs> so that is what he's saying. So don't keep postponing seeking Govinda. Don't keep postponing uh, seeking Moksha. Because Manisha Janma is very rare. Okay, so what if I die, I will be born again. I can restart my studies. Start from ABCD once again, no problem. This is how do you know that the next Janma is going to be human Janma. That is, there is no such guarantee. Nobody said that when you die, you will be born as a human being. Maybe for many, many uh, Yugas, you don't even have a chance to be born again. Or you will be born as many animals or insects. Who knows? So do not postpone. At least now, start now, whatever your age may be. Don't wait for retirement. If whatever stage of life you are right now, just pause, take a pause and uh, give priority to seeking Ishvara, seeking Moksha. Because generally what happens, uh, when we are children, they'll say, oh, yes, children, no, it's not the age. Then you became a teenager. Maybe in between you will study something about, uh, read something about Ramayana, Mahabharata. And then, then you become a te teenager and then the attention is somewhere and then you get married and then then you studies, you know. Then let us study first. I have to focus on my studies. And then after studies, oh, let me focus on um, in a job. And then once you get a job, oh, I have to focus on my career. And then when you focus on your career, then you marry it. Okay, what to do next? Let me at least get married. Okay. Because everybody asks me to get married. If I don't get married, they keep asking me why I'm not married. Okay, I'll get married. And then after marriage, then uh, okay, now I'm married. I have more responsibility. Then you have children. Okay, let children grow. Now children, I can't. I don't have time for study. I don't have time for devotion. Okay. Then let children grow okay I just want to finish plus one plus two plus three. Then after plus one, oh I have education. Okay, now the, now they have higher education, I have to earn more. Now you know it goes like that. Then higher education and then their job anxiety also you have. Then they also get married and they you know it keeps going. When when it is even in between when you pray you're not Praying for the sake of Ishwara. Nobody prays that, hey Bhagavan, I want you, I want Moksha. Nobody prays like that. Everybody prays, I want, let, oh Bhagavan, please help me fulfill this. Hey Bhagavan, please uh, let my son get a job, let my daughter get a good uh, job, she should have a good career, my job. You know, this, it keeps going like that. All prayers are connected with Arthakama alone. Even your Devotion towards Bhagwan, even when you are praying, the prayer is also for Arthakama. You are not saying that, hey Bhagwan, give me the maturity so that I will be able to seek you. Hey Bhagwan, give me the maturity and the health so that I will seek moksha. Or even nobody chooses moksha for the sake of moksha. So that is what Shankara is saying. When are you going to really, unless it's like, you want to take bath in the ocean and you say, oh my god, there are too, too much of waves. Let the waves subside, then I will go and have bath. So the waves will never subside. Unless you yourself say, whatever it may be, I'm going now. I'm going to take bath. So it doesn't happen otherwise. So this Arthakama prevents you from actually seeking Ishvara. Whatever prayer you are doing in between, you have Shraddha in Bhagwan. You do have love for Bhagwan. All that is Fine. But for what? Again, it's only for Arthakama, which is limited, which is not going to help you. Nahi nahi rakshati samprate sannihite kale. It's not going to protect you. And not only that, even while you are aware, uh, living, vidhi vyadi abhimana grasthi. Vidhi, may you know, there is vyadi, which I already covered, I have already mentioned. There are so many types of diseases which you get. Even if it's not disease, then you have knee pain, back pain, something comes. So all the attention goes in taking care of the body. Abhimana. Abhimana means, uh, has two meanings. One is attachment and the other is also pride. 
you are so attached to something you just can't even think of being without it even the very thought of not having it in your life makes you feel terribly scared terribly insecure so you are actually holding on to something that whatever you are holding on to that also is not stable if my life is nalini dalagata jalam ati tarlam then it is for everyone right it's for my spouse it's for my children it's for my friends my relatives for everyone it applies for every not just for me so when i am attached abhimana when i have abhimana to things that which are everything is nalini dalagata jalam so i am holding on to something which is not stable which is not capable of giving me that strength but i think it's my perception i see it as something which is as a source of security so he is saying everybody has to hold on to ishara alone everybody has to seek bhagwan alone so how can something which is not stable can give you stability that is not possible so only bhagwan Govinda alone can give you that security. He is the real Shakti. He is the real protector. So this Abhimana is there, this attachment, and also uh, pride. You know, too much of pride of about one's own body. Even being fit, one is so proud about. Oh, I am so fit. Oh, look at my muscles. Look how strong I am. you can there is nothing wrong in feeling proud about uh one's accomplishments or one's family and uh, being able to perform your responsibilities to your satisfaction i am proud that i did what i need to do to my family that is all is fine he is talking about the dharva the pride you know the damba showing off and always boasting about oneself boasting about one's accomplishments boasting about being influential boasting you know that fellow you know how he got the job that day was waiting for the bus i only told him which bus will take him to the interview office so it's because of me only he got the job even for small things people boast the person didn't contribute anything for that person the person has studied went to the college the person is intelligent just because somebody gave him a lift or you know small contribution but the person takes too much credit too much too proud about one's children too proud about one's spouse too proud about one's family to the level of boasting it so the very fact that a person is boasting shows that the person is so attached to it so this abhimana the word attachment and pride they go together the same even though uh we say there are two meanings but without attachment there is no boasting so he says it gives you a lot of dukkham because when it you are near separated from it it's very painful abhimana drastam shlokam shoka hatam lokam samastam is shoka hatam so there is lot of shoka because of your abhimana and vyadhi also most of the people are hatam destroyed by the shoka itself so in vyadhi is there are two types of dukha one is physically you are not able to perform the way you used to perform you become dependent on people that itself is a pain or you are not dependent on one is you are dependent on people and you also keep controlling people nagging people irritating people around you and uh, people start hating you for that also so that way also it is dukkham only and then varayam is there where you have to spend money your all your hard earned money goes only for spending on fixing your yeah that is also dukkham one is You lose your energy, and one is you lose your both ways. It is become only because you have to go through it physically and emotionally. Also, it is become when you are dependent and you are weak, when you are not able to do things the way you want to do. It is really pain. So, lokam shoka hatam. The loka 
the shloka hatam he says we are completely destroyed by the shloka so what do you do every day is an opportunity to celebrate so every one day so you sleep and wake up in the morning it is a grace it is like a new birth you know? i have been given a new day the sun shines the sun rises in the morning and gives lot of hope okay all these days i was like this from today now it's a new life the new opportunity is one more chance let me see let me have some clarity from let me be a new person for what i was yesterday sound is very shaky for everyone or only for one person my voice is not clear what was i saying one day at a time okay. so we live one day at a time so every day is a anugraham alone every day is a ishwaras grace bhagwan says okay one more day for you <laughs> take use of it and that's why in our culture if, if we see when we wake up in the morning the first thing we do is we, we remove the bed and keep it in the corner and um, it's in a traditional house i am saying and the first thing they do is take bath and then um, go about with your work start with lighting a lamp and do puja and then go about cooking and then offer it to bhagwan and then your whole day goes you know in puja or listening to some katha or some paath and then when you go to bed the last thought is supposed to be ishwara that is why they say when you go to bed think of ishwara read some good books why because i told you in the beginning itself whatever your last thought is before dying that is what you take Uh, to the next generals so it's always better to remember bhagwan before going to bed take his name and go to sleep don't sleep angrily or with sorrow or with uh, no hope and all that say bhagwan nama and uh, so let that be if anything happens in between <laughs> that night also i'm not frightening you okay i'm not presenting any depressed picture here just say then at least i will know okay i have taken bhagwan's nama and uh, that will protect me uh, and that is why you know um, throughout the day they won't touch that bed also it's almost like a bed which is pete you will say you know that is no shaucham is not there so throughout the day they won't touch that bed it's almost like i died and woke up and so they will uh, mop the floor and all that every day morning they will mop the floor just like what we do after death you know one is for saucham for uh, cleanliness and other is also because every day is a new day every day is a birth you have to celebrate each and every day and uh, then okay okay what to do i have wasted at least 30 years 40 years 45 years what to do so it's not too late you can start any day so that is why bhagwan uh, shankaracharya is looking at that elderly person and is saying at least now start now it's not late nalini dalagata jalamati tarlam tatvat jivitam atishaya chakalam nitivya divimana krishna lokam shoka so do not allow yourself to be a victim of whatever is happening so if you hold on to bhagwan then there is no way there is no uh, opportunity for being depressed Because you trust him, the trust in Bhagwan, Shraddha in Bhagwan will keep you cheerful. So anything that you are attached to will give you pain. So don't be attached. So there is another. Um, generally, many people think that uh, how can you love without being attached? So that question is always there. In order to be loving, you have to be attached. If you are not attached to something, you won't have love for it. but that is not true because uh, when somebody is suffering when something goes wrong to a stranger also you do feel sad right you do have compassion 
um, it's something which comes naturally to everybody without being told you know that compassion and kindness but you have comes naturally it needs will you know your free will to say to push it aside to say okay okay let us forget about it somebody will take care of it comes later but the first the response is when somebody is suffering is it comes and you run to help someone you don't even think twice you just go but what stops you is only fear you know a fear of being cheated or fear of being looted or fear of being hurt that stops you but otherwise instinctively everybody is loving everybody has compassion everybody wants to give it comes there is no attachment right you are not attached to such people you are not attached to the, that animal you are not attached to the plant or tree but when something is being cut you do feel sad you feel that pain so that is that is love that is kindness that is compassion you don't have to be attached attachment is different love is different attachment is generally you are attached to something which you see as a source of security for you something uh, without which you will feel threatened when you don't feel threatened by the presence or absence of something you are still able to love but when you feel threatened by the presence or absence of something you want to either avoid it or you want to hold on to it that causes pain so that is easy test you know it's a very easy test that you can do for yourself whether you are just loving or attached so you don't have to be attached in order to be loving so when you are attached then there is dukkha the next verse is saying yavat vikto parjana saktah you can read it yavat vikto parjana saktah tavan nija parivaro raktah पश्चाजीवति जर्जर देहे वार्तां कोपि न पृच्छति गेहे यावत एस लॉन्ग एज वित्त उपार्जन सक्तः यू आर कैपेबल ऑफ अर्निंग मनी तावत टिल सच टाइम nija parivara ha people who are close to you trust them they are uh, they respect you okay they are they are committed to you they are uh, attached to you paschat afterwards later uh jarjar de when you become old you know you are not you are no more a contributor and uh, jivati when you when you are living and you are not a contributor kopi nobody na prichati nobody asks say in your house gehe in your house vaatta nobody asks you how are you what do you want nobody comes and consults you nobody cares a damn about you in other words because you are no more a contributor as long as you are contributor when you are able to, as long as you are, you are able to earn money and provide vittasya uparjana saktah as long as you are capable of earning money as long as you are fit okay then everybody comes in consults you they respect you they talk to you they are close to you they want to go out with you even strangers come and become friends with you at that time everybody loves you definitely they will love you they want to take from you because and you also because of that garvam is there you know we saw in the previous abhiman uh, agrasta so i am a giver i can give even in giving there is a giving happily is different 
but that pride, you know, you go a slam and river. Without me, this family, you know, and then without me, my spouse can't, without me, my children can't. That boasting, that is what he's addressing here, not, not just doing something happy. Because people slog for the family, people slog for the children, people slog for the spouse. You know, you, you don't even enjoy life. Even depriving yourself, you keep working for your family because you don't want your children to suffer. Suffer means what? You don't want your children to know what pain is. The children should know not no pain. They should be provided with everything. No matter what. They should not even long for anything. If they desire for something, they should get it. Even if I have to die, I will die and give. Huh? Give whatever they want. Even if I can't afford, I will take loan. I will give. Keep providing. You, know? you keep on providing, providing. And also, not only your children should uh, be ha provided with everything they want when they are young, even after your absence, when you are no more there, you still want them to be happy. So you you save for the future also. Not only just your future. So when I die and I am not there, I am not talking about 25, 30 year old. I am talking about the 60 and 70 year old. Even after I am gone, my children should not suffer. I will keep everything for them. So even then, you are thinking only about Artha Kama. So you are thinking only about Artha. Artha Kama means your children are security and children are pleasure. Okay, Children are Artha Kama because family is Artha Kama only. So you keep providing and uh, still such time everybody loves you. They are attached. Raktaha means they are attached to you. They are close to you. Then as though they are inseparable from you. Paschat, later on. Gehe, once you no more or a contribute, nobody will ask you how are you, what do you want. Till that time, they will even ask you what breakfast you want, what lunch you want, what dinner you want, everything. They will ask everything. Yeah, some of you may think, no, no, this is not the case in my family, but he's talking generally. Okay. So once you become old, he's talking when you become old and you're not a contributor, either because you don't bring in money. Or because you are no more an influential person. Because sometimes you need the IPS, IAS officers. Once they are in the job, as long as they are in the job, they are very influential. The day they resign, that's a no use. Nothing. Nobody is going to listen to them. That's why many people after retirement, you know, they feel a lot of depression. So as long as they are working, then when they are in a job, they have all the power. The power either because they are influential or because they were contributor. And once they retire, they feel lost, they feel very insecure. And that's why that boasting, you know, that garvam should not be there. You should, when I am a contributor, I should be happy to be a contributor. I should be pleased to be a contributor. I should see it as an anugraha that I am a contributor. Bhagwan has kept me in a position where I can contribute. So it's my responsibility, so I am contributing over. So when you retire, then you are satisfied that you did whatever you need to be, uh, you need to do for your family, and then you retire happily, happily and peacefully, not with fear, not with insecurity again. And then especially when you become old, then there is a lot of fear. All this happens only because a person has not person who has grown physically has not grown emotionally also. But emotion maturity is what Bhagawan is talking about. Grow up. Seek Bhagawan. The only maturity, emotional maturity is when you understand that everything around you is also Nalini Dalagata Jalam. People are given to moods. People are given to change of mind, change of heart. Something which is not in my control. Let me hold on to Bhagavan. Let me hold on to Bhagavan. Not because even holding on to Bhagavan should not be out of fear. <laughs> it's not that, oh my God, these people will leave me, so let me hold on to Bhagavan. No. Because uh, 
you have to you have to seek good one with love with trust with trust he will take care everything will be provided he is the karma phala data you know anything that comes my way i will accept it graciously and patiently so that should be the attitude then only a person can be happy even in old age so when your body becomes weak the person nobody will really respect you so even when they go out they say okay i have kept everything you you stay at home okay you be at home <laughs> we go and come back quickly okay see if you come there you can't walk you know you have that age they may mean really they may be really kind and compassionate not that they want to avoid it but because of my longing and insecurity i feel oh these people are avoiding me look at this fellow when he was a baby i carried him every day and you know i carried you for 10 months i carried you on my shoulders even when i was sick i took care of i never left you in any you know all this you suddenly you want to point out everything and make them feel guilty you know whatever we did was our responsibility responsibility should not be pointed out but because of our insecurity attachment what happens you feel that they are abandoning you rejecting you ignoring you and that itself is so come that it's itself is a very 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 painful for a person even when you are moving around everywhere if somebody wants a remote <laughs> they grab the remote from you or you grab the remote from them because you want to establish no i am still the boss of the house i am still the provider so it, it need not necessarily mean that they are treating you like that but even because of my own weakness my own insecurity i think that people are ignoring me and they keep complain about people whom you love same people whom you love the same people for whom you provided everything they become an enemy to you suddenly then you talk about them to everybody you call your brother you call your mother you call your sister you call your friend all these people you know are ungrateful idiots they took everything from me i gave them everything i sacrificed this for them i sacrificed that for them and they are all ungrateful some people may be really ungrateful i am not saying that but my own perception because my because of my immaturity so this pain is something i yeah, i invite such situations and then suddenly somebody comes to your house and you want to talk about you know that day it was like that and now you know so you make a comparison you have to accept that if you really enjoy each and every day doing whatever you have been doing then when you are 60 or 50 or 70 you won't regret because you have already enjoyed you were already happy and if you if you sacrifice something thinking that this sacrifice is an investment if you sacrifice something as an investment then you are looking for some some returns later and then that return doesn't come then that is when you are angry so you don't have to sacrifice with the intention of returns so if you sacrifice with the intention of returns then you will be sad when it doesn't come back to you your sacrifice should be happily you give it's it's no more a sacrifice you don't feel the pain in giving you should not feel the pain in giving if you feel pain in giving then it's not the right way of giving you should be happy not for benefits if you had sought benefit if you saw your children as investment or old age or you saw somebody something else as an investment and when that doesn't give the expected result then you are angry with everything that was loving to you you know then that is really painful extremely painful because you lost all those years you know you didn't even enjoy all those uh, pleasures that came your way then you tell me you know i had an opportunity to go to us i didn't go because of you and this is what you do to me no it even if don't do it okay you did it happily also it will happen if you do it with pain also anyway <laughs> the result is not going to be the same what we expected you have to accept it as ishwara prasada 
This is how Bhagavan has kept it. Okay, I will take it. Do not. Uh, first of all, we should not see family as an investment, love as an investment. If you see love as an invest investment, then definitely you will be shocked. You will be uh, facing disappointment. You understand the difference? That that uh, attachment. So that attachment is there when you invest too much of emotion with an expectation. Don't say love is pain. No, love is not a pain. How can love be pain? Then you should not expect love from others also. Everybody wants love, but nobody likes to be. Uh, even when you are attached to someone, the person to whom you are attached to also feels, oh my God, you are you are clinging on to me. Just move away from me. People sometimes move away from you when they know that you are clinging on to them in the name of love. People don't like it. It becomes a burden. It's really irritating. People move away. Same with children also. When you are clinging on to children, then children say, "Mom, give me some space." <laughs> so even a mother, you know, is loving to her child, but if the child is always nagging, clinging. You say, no, the mother says, even for a mother, her own child, at times when it's nagging, it gets one attack. So just imagine when you're old and when you're dependent, people will do the same attack when you're nagging. So it is the time to mind one's own business. Be happy that you did what you need to do and just relax. Okay. So, Nalini Dalagata Jalamati Taranam, Tatvaj Jeevita Matishaya Chakalam, Vidyavya Dirmana Kirsam, Yopam Shokam, Shoka Hatam Chasam Hatam, Yavat Vikto, as long as you are able to be a con, as long as you are a contributor, people will respect you. Even if you are not a contributor, you are someone who keeps taking things from others. You may, okay, you may say that no, I have earned a lot of money. I am not dependent on people for money. But you may not be dependent on people for money. But to move around, to go out, to get things, then you are to become dependent. So at that time, people are not going to treat you the way the way they have been treating you. So at that time, you will feel pain. So, know where to place your love. You know, Bhagwan is the one who provides for everyone. I am not the one who provides to my family. My family is provided through me because my family is blessed to have me, and Bhagwan has blessed me to be a provider. See, whichever way you see it is Bhagwan. It is only because it is His grace that everything is happening. So, recognize Ishwara's grace. That the real provider is Ishwara. That I am able to be a provider today is also because of Ishwara. That I am able to give is also because of Ishwara. That I am able to receive today is because Bhagwan is giving me. I am able to receive. I receive with gratitude. So the grace, the gratitude, both you have to see that everything is grace, and then you have to have gratitude towards. Receiving from whoever is giving. Sometimes people may, may not be grateful to you for what you are providing. But if you keep expecting them to be, one has to know, one has to be intelligent enough to know how much to really be a contributor, at what point you have to withdraw yourself. All this is uh, one has to be intelligent enough to know what's happening and uh, either withdraw totally or just draw your boundaries. So one has to learn to draw one's boundaries. But all the time, remember that whatever I am today, it's only because of Ishwara's grace. So, Bhaja Govindam, Bhaja Govindam, Govindam Bhaja Muramate, Samprapte Samnihite Kale, Nahinahi Rakshati Prajabya, Parikali and Tam, Yayan, Margin, 
देशो यम क्षोभ रहिता ब्राह्मण संत निर्भया सर्वे सर्वे संत निरामया सर्वे भद्रा पश्यंतु मा कशि दुखाघवे असुमा सदमय तम सोमा ज्योतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मा अमृतंगमय ओं पूर्णम पूर्णमीद पूर्णा पूर्णमुदे पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्य ओं शाति 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 हरी ओं श्री गुरभ्यो नम हरी ओं